Hi ho guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the old den of tools. And today we got a slightly different tool than normal. Yep, we're talking bike racks. And actually, this is there's kind of a thing here. So stay tuned. I got I'm gonna answer some interesting questions for you and talk about some interesting stuff. We just did a trip from down near the Las Vegas area. Uh, up to Montana, we talked over 900 miles, over 9,000 feet elevation changes from scalding hot to freezing cold. Let's see how it all handled it. So here's here's where we started. We started off at the old RV down there in uh, Lake Mead, and uh, we put that in storage. We packed up the old family truckster, and we headed up north. How far? As I said, 883 uh, if you follow the highway, which, of course, I never do. So we were well over 900 we took a little detour through Panguitch up through there. We did a little bit around here around Pocatello stuff up, of course, around Yellowstone and whatnot. Anyway, well, from the scalding desert here at over 100 degrees, 103, I think we hit, and uh, at an elevation around 1,200 feet all the way up to uh, over uh, Brian Head uh, on our way to Panguitch, Utah, crested, I think, near 10,000, if just over 10,000 feet. Uh, went through West Yellowstone where we saw a little bit of snow and stuff. Yeah, it's so weird to think that this town, this town, if you, I don't care what time of year you go to West Yellowstone, bring a jacket, bring a sweater because you're going to need it. One of my favorite tourist trap towns ever. Uh, and I love me a good tourist trap, but it can get chilly no matter what time of year. So anyway, what we got here is we got the KYX bike rack. We put that one on the front. We got the KYX four uh, post bike, put that one on the back. Let me show you the setup and how it handled through the trip. Boom, we got the front rack going here. See our receiver down there. This thing is pretty good and secure. It's got some wiggle to it, but it's not bad. The red uh, Velcro strap, that's just cause two is one, one is none kind of safety thing. You don't need it, but you know, I'm a safety nut. And then on the back, we've got two more. Now we have other e-bikes. Say hi. 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 Get ready, ready for our road trip. We're packed here. We got three e-bikes in the back. But as you see, these are step-through design. That's kind of the negative thing when it comes to bike racks. They do make adapters. Of course, I couldn't find any in stock. And we got two back here. Now why don't I have all three back here? Weight distribution on top of that, these are e-bikes. E-bikes weigh more, all right? The weight, uh, I don't remember what the max weight on this, it's like a hundred something. So I'd rather distribute it across, you know, two different racks when they're putting it all on one. And again, we got a secondary strap, not necessary, but you know what, that's the way I am. And a bike lock just to be safe. Now we're about to do 800 plus miles. Let's see how it goes. All right, just checking in on our trip. As you can see here, I did make the call to flip the front bike for better visibility from the driver's side. We flipped the bike so the handlebars are more are over on this side, and we pulled the, the seat, giving me a clear line of visibility. This is about the level that I sit at, so that's what I'm seeing when I drive down the road. So far, so good. Everything's nice and strong, holding tight. We'll check in along the trip. All right, well, there you go. There you have it. Here it is. Now, this is a $120 list. There's a $30 off coupon that you click that little check mark. That's going to take that down to $90. They've got this one, which is the four bike rack there, and it's $130 with that same 30 off coupon. That's going to take that down to $100. That's a pretty stellar deal. I'll tell you what, looking for bike racks before we left, I was... Uh, I, I thought we weren't going to be able to find one. I was uh, having a conniption there. And KYX reached out and said, hey, can we send you a couple of these to test out? And I was like, oh, please, please do. Anyway, so we got these all racked up. Uh, and you, you saw how they went. And it, it was now one thing you're wondering, like, why did you not have 
all the bikes on there. Well, first consideration, 143 is the weight capacity on not just the two rack, but on the four rack as, as well. Why? Because, well, this has just got a longer top rack. You still have the same hinge points. Those are going to be the weak areas. And so you get the same amount of, of weight, uh, max weight on that. Now, if you're riding typical bikes, that's not an issue. But as you saw, we had e-bikes. E-bikes are heavy. They're not lightweight. And also, there's some other issues with e-bikes on how you get it on there. And as you see in the video, we did eventually solve that with the crossbar attachment but they didn't have that when we were, uh, well, I couldn't find one. I couldn't get one before we left because we didn't, uh, I didn't think about it until the last minute. Um, anyway, so this is what I really like about this is the mounting point because some of these have really basic, you just lash it on straight to the metal or something like that. I couldn't believe how basic some of the setups were. This is pretty nice. It's got this nice rubberized mold that kind of fits and wraps in around it. You got the bungee kind of thing that goes over the top. Bungee is, is too weak a term for how, how these things are hard to get on and hard to get off, which is good because that's what's holding the bike when you're doing 80 down the highway. And yes, folks, 80 is the speed limit out west. I know a lot of you east of the Rockies or east of the Mississippi don't realize that because I get some people going, can't believe how fast you guys were going in this one video. That, that's the posted speed limit, folks. All right. Now, hey, back in the day in Montana, we didn't have a speed limit. All right. And it does allow you, it has a hinge point on it so it can rock out. So uh, if you need to open your hatch or something, which doesn't work much, doesn't do much for you if you're in a tailgate setup like me. But if you're in an SUV or something like that, that can be very beneficial. You don't have to take the whole thing off. Now, that said, they, they comes with all the mounting hardware, including the pin for the receiver. But the pin there is it's just a bolt. It, it, and I, and I downplay it. It's, it works just fine. If someone's going to steal it, they better bring some tools to get it off because once you really put it on there, it's not coming off by hand. But that said, you know, usually we use a quick uh, release one like this. So you can take things on and off and stuff like that. We use that for small trailers around town. But when I'm traveling, I use a Reese tow, uh, tow power like this. It comes as a coupled setup. You've got this piece here, so it goes into the, 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 the coupler, and you got the receiver pin as well, and they're keyed alike, so you can use the same key on both. And that is, well, well, key, if you know what I mean. The other thing I want to talk about is the bike crossbar adapter. Now, of course, I picked mine up once we got here. I went to Second Wind Sports, which is in Bozeman, Montana. You can't order online from them. They uh, great place. If you're in Bozeman, check them out. Great people down there. Uh, they buy and sell used uh, outdoor sporting equipment. But if you want to go on Amazon, you can get your most basic style one for all of $12. Here's our truly basic one. I do kind of worry about it scratching and stuff on something like that. And then you got uh, Thule Tool. I don't know how they pronounce it. Having something a little bit a little bit more advanced there, uh, coming in at $50. We paid, I think, uh, $15 for our, our used one, and it seems to work just fine. Anyway, that's something that not only can get you, like, say, if you have a classic woman's bike that's got a, a lower crossbar on it, or if you've got an e-bike like, like what we have that doesn't even have a crossbar of any kind and allows you to uh, set those up. Anyway, as I said, this company, I want to, I want to thank them for, for sending this out. Uh, it, it was a lifesaver for us. I'd never heard of KYX before, didn't know what to expect. I was pleasantly pleased, pleasantly pleased, <laughs> pleasantly surprised with the quality of this thing. Uh, it was much better quality than I was expecting, much better quality than a lot of the other named products, you know, brand name products that I've seen out there. Anyway, if you're, if am I going to say you have to buy this? Is this the one to get? I don't know. I am not an expert when it comes to bike uh, receivers or bike mounting systems and stuff like that. I've used quite a few more of the motorcycle style for some of the other scooters and stuff that we have. But I got to tell you, we're going to keep using this and actually probably going to take, I, I left the two uh, the two bike post one on the front of my truck because I have a front hitch and I can just leave it up there. And if kids have a bike problem around town, I can run down, pick it up without having to throw it in the back of the truck and stuff like that. Just lash it right onto that. We're going to put the other one on the back of my son's uh, free Jeep project that we're going to be starting a whole series of videos. Yeah, free Jeep. You got a, we got a 96 Jeep, uh, was it? Uh, it's a Cherokee or whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to be having all sorts of fun with that. Anyway, we hope to see you around. Make sure you chomp the old like button, smash the subscribe, ring the bell. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.